Outside, should I run and hide? How do I take my company worldwide? Do you love the law? Did you watch Hee Haw? What's the weirdest thing that you ever saw? What's it like in court? Favorite sport? Can you help with my book report? Is my hair too long? Am I right or wrong? And do you mind if I sing along to anything? Ask Alan anything in the world. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Ask Alan the Podcast. I'm Alan Crone, the CEO of the Crone Law Firm, and uh, today uh, we have a really uh, exciting uh, guest, Dr. Susan Sharp, who is a uh, minister with the uh, uh, Methodist uh, Church here in Memphis, and you you minister at the Wesleyan Hills United Methodist Church. Uh, Susan, do I understand that? That's right. That's right, Alan. Uh, help uh, help me understand uh, where where is that in the in the in the county, I I, I can't quite. It's on that. it's on three ninety South Yates between Shady Grove and Poplar. Okay, and it's uh kind of it's it's kind of down in you. Sometimes you might pass it and not see the church, but it's down it's the in one the that's, that's right. kind of behind the synagogue. Yes, that's it. I've passed it many many times. That's right. Well, you need to stop. I, well, I'm, maybe I will. That sounds like a great, I, as you may know, I'm also ordained minister. I'm a deacon in the Catholic church. So probably when you're having services, I'm busy elsewhere, but I'd love to well, come by might, and visit. That's right. That'd be great. Yeah. Well, um, Susan, tell us a little bit about, uh, I, I see from my notes that you uh, you started your career as a, as a teacher. Is that right? Yes. Um I started out uh, years ago um, thinking I was to be a teacher. My mother taught school in Brownsville. I'm from Brownsville, Tennessee, originally. Okay. And my, um, my, my, I had two older brothers. My mother was a Latin teacher and geometry. So she, she ended up teaching. And But I felt called to the ministry probably when I was about, oh, I'd say, 16 or 17 and I told my parents and they didn't know any women preachers so mother said you can be a wonderful Christian school teacher so that's what I did I went to the F University of Mississippi for my BA in education and came here and began uh, teaching at Presbyterian Day School and I taught there for many years and got my degree in counseling at the University of Memphis and um started their counseling program at that time and loved it. But I also went through during that time, a very painful divorce, no children. Mm. And the minister who had meant so much to me in Cleveland, Ohio said, why don't you come to Cleveland? And when you do, we'll, um, you can run a singles program and see what the church didn't do for you when you went through your divorce. So I'm, um, Reluctantly felt called, but moved to Cleveland. I'd never lived in the North. It was a great experience, but one of the most amazing things, a um, woman that was a Methodist, her husband was Catholic. They went, uh, invited me to their home. And she, he said to me, this was after I'd been up there about eight months, um, a little more. And he said, my wife says you're a good Bible teacher. So why don't you go to seminary? And uh, my dad had died. My mother was still alive, but had retired. And I told him, I said, well, you know, I'm, first of all, I'm too old. I was like 35, 38. And I said, uh, also, I have um, took a cut in salary to come up here after teaching. And I, I can't go. And he said, well, we'd like to send you. But we want you to go to the best seminary in the country. So I narrowed it down between Yale and Emory, and they wanted me to go visit both of them. And when I went to Yale, <clears throat> the Old Testament professor, Brevard Childs, said, what do you want to be good in, Susan? And I said, preaching. They said, well, the best place in the country is at Emory. And that was with Dr. Fred Craddock at the time. So, and when I sat in his class the first day or two of homiletics, 
He said, if you want to be good in preaching, you ought to spend time with children. And I realized I had when that was the time PDS had chapel every day. And most of my friends did not like doing chapel. So they'd say, Sharp, will you do chapel for me? And I'd it'd big tears roll down my eyes because I thought, wow, where have I spent 12 years of my life? Right. With children? Well, that's uh, that's great. You know, that's a great story. And I, one of the reasons it's a great story is I'm a firm believer that God <laughs> speaks to us through other people. Yes. And you had a number of people in your life that their influence brought you to where you are now, and including your parents, who, if they hadn't said what they said, you wouldn't have had those 12 years. That's exactly. That's a very good point. Very good point. Yes. And so when I was in Cleveland and I called my mother to tell her that these people wanted to send me, I said, mother, I'm sure I'm not supposed to go. And it had been 20 years since that first call. And my mother said, well, Susan, what does God have to do to get your attention? <laughs> and she was my very best supporter until she died. She would get people and say, don't you want to go hear Susan preach? She especially said that to my brothers, which I said, that is not good. Don't say it to my brothers. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, uh, yeah, that's uh, that, like I said, that's a great story. And, uh, uh, you know, yeah, God does things in his own time. Right. I mean, right. that's right. Uh, and, and sometimes we, uh, I, I've, I've had plenty of times when I have, uh, God's wanted me to do something and I've, I've, he and I've wrestled all over the chapel. Uh, yes. And, yes. and finally I do it. And I say, why didn't I do that 10 years ago? I know exactly what you mean. As a matter of fact, the week before I uh, went to Cleveland, I was praying. The way I prayed every day was, God, thank you for um, this invitation to go work in Cleveland. But I know you're, you know, you're, I know you're not calling me. And then I'd go to sleep. Well, I had the last night before I had to make the decision. I woke up in the middle of the night with the story of Sarah and Abraham. And I thought, I know that can't be God talking to me. So I took two Tylenol, went back to sleep. <laughs> and, and then God woke me up with the story of Samuel and Eli in the, and saying, yes, I'll go. And uh, it was really a challenging. First of all, I'd never lived in the North. And um, I didn't really like the snow that much. So, um, and my mother rode up with me and then flew back. And we got to Cincinnati from Browns. And I turned into the biggest bear ever. <laughs> and I said to my mother, mother, uh, I'm sorry. I don't know what's happening to me. She said, this is a long way from home. And I said, well, do you think daddy would be excited for me? And he, she said, I think your daddy would think it's a long way from home. I said, well, do you think I did the right thing? She said, I think it's too late now. So, <laughs> but it was a great experience because that experience opened me up, not only to this sweet family mm -hmm. that uh, helped me go to Emory. And then when I came back from the, from seminary, I, well, I got a call from Jack Stanford, was the headmaster at PDS for a number of years. Mm -hmm. And then they moved him to Hutchison. And so... He called me in Cleveland and said, Susan, why don't you come be the counselor for Hutchison? I said, well, I'm on the way to seminary. He said, well, I'll wait for you. So then when I finished seminary the first time for my Master of Divinity, I came back and was the chaplain at Hutchison. They hadn't had one since, but I was there for four years and then went into the church and um, then wanted to go back and work with Dr. Craddock to get my doctorate. And so that's, um, and the interesting thing, Alan, is that so out of the blue, when I was going back to get my doctorate, um, I was eating lunch with somebody at the time who was a big, has been a big giver to things in Memphis. And she said, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to go back and get my doctorate if I can. And she just reached in a purse, pulled out her checkbook and gave me a check for $5,000. And, and then I was uh, the um, 
head of alumni at Candler School of Theology for three years. So they'd fly me down to Emmerich. And I asked the dean and the president, Dr. Jim Laney, who's from this area originally, um, he was president of Emory. And I said to the, I said to the um, dean, I said, do you have any extra money? And he said, Susan, we really don't. And I was walking across campus and Dr. Laney came up and said, well, Susan, have you raised any money? And I said, well, I've got $5,000. I'll put that on my tuition, but I'll have to raise the rest. And he said, well, no, you put that on your living expenses because I'm paying for your tuition. And Alan, all along the way, when I, in the churches I've been in, I've been the first woman to be in that church. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing that some of the people who've grown up and thought women can't be priests, preachers and um, that that I have been the first woman and that when they ask me I say listen I know God called me when twice God paid for my way yeah. to do it yeah well that's that's well let me ask you a technical question all right okay because uh, I preach too and so I'm always looking for pointers so okay how, how do you approach a sermon uh, you know, how, how do you put it together? I know prayer is a big part of it. Yes. You can't put it to sermon together without prayer. No. And this, the sermon you can't put together without it being your life too, without you living into it. But to get my doctorate, I had to teach preaching at Candler and to a group of people. And one of the things that I say is when you, when you take a text and you read it and read it and read it. And you have the lectionary just like I do. Mm -hmm. I don't preach from that every time, but I, like now I'm doing a series during Lent with uh, the Gospel of Luke. But I'll take the t lectionary and read the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Epistle and the Gospel, and just keep reading it until something lifts out for me. And then after it does, I, I have, a real strong leaning to get a good title. Now, I don't know whether you get to put a title in y'all's bulletins or not, but titles were so important to me. And the reason, and when I was in Cleveland, people would come to that church. It was a big church, uh, United Methodist Church. And people would come and I'd ask them, I don't think I've seen you here before. What made you come today? And they said, we saw the title out on the marquee. And that brought them into the church. Right. So a lot of a lot of preachers I know don't pay any attention to titles, but I really do. And so I I find when you're work, working on a sermon and you find the text you want to preach, see if you can't put that text in a theme sentence. One theme, and usually it ought to be a positive theme mm -hmm. instead of being a, something with a question or. Just like um, the prodigal son, if you're going to preach on that from Luke 15, you might say uh, this, the son's description of you. And then you, something about it as you talk to describe the two sons. And the person I work with, Fred Craddock, was, he's dead now, but he was wonderful at taking you right to the edge and sitting down. And my doctorate had to do not with preaching, but with how the per people listen. And so he would say something like, at the very end, if you were preaching on the, the prodigal son, which, which brother are you? Or he'd say something like, I just heard in the neighbors across the street, the sign that said, we're having a party for this person that's been gone to prison for a long time. And he said, I wonder how many of us are going to go. And he would tie the whole bit around something like that and just leave you with it. He didn't, he didn't have a, a prayer at the end. And rarely do I have a prayer at the end of my message. I sit down. And one of the things I've learned at Wesleyan Hills that I just love is we have great music. And so I'll think of a song, whether it's a Christian song or whether it's a popular song, 
Mm -hmm. that goes with that theme. And I sit down right after it and the person plays it on the piano or sings it. And it just kind of takes it like a baseball bat and hits it out in the home right. run. Yeah, I find the best messages are the ones, as you say, that, that tee it up. And then you, through prayer, you, the individual kind of takes it the next the next uh, level. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to, you know, telling you what you ought to be taking out of it. Exactly. And see, I've worked with uh, several preachers. I was uh, I was a Christ Methodist for two years on, as the teaching preacher. And I really talked to the senior minister at that time, a long time, about trust the listener. Instead of just having outline on the back of the bulletin, telling them to fill in the blank. I said, trust... Dr. Craddock used to say, it's like getting on a bus. And as you preach, the Holy Spirit will take you down the road you need to go. And if you don't end up where I am, that's not my problem. That's the Spirit's problem. Right. That's what that's what you're supposed to get out of it. Instead of, uh, and I'm not a three-point preacher. I'm much more one-point. Yeah, I, I, as a... As a trial lawyer, I, I tend my 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 uh, sermons tend to be more uh, persuasive. I think than you know I'm trying to persuade, and uh, people have said you know we really like that because usually an action item at the end or something to think about at the end, and uh, everybody's different. You know, yeah. I mean, you're going to preach differently than I am, and uh, the bishop is going to preach differently than me, and that's what that's what makes it great. Yes. Now, how long have you been preaching, Alan? Um, well, in church, uh, I was ordained <laughs> in, in 2016. That's wonderful. That's yes. great. Yes. But, I mean, it's something usually, you know, somebody says it's a big difference between getting up and having something to say or just getting up and saying something. You know, and you have to, it's like looking for the, pearl of great price you just dig down and but one of the things i noticed with students is that if you had a text with say we'll say the prodigal sons who were talking about that they would try to say something about every verse i said no just take let it lift out and take one kernel you'll have another chance to tell because i learned the hard way i was um, in a workshop for preaching and I, I thought this was a great sermon. And the person critiquing me said, I can tell people trust you and that they listen. And I said, thank you. And then he said, this professor said, you know, Susan, that could have been a great sermon for about 18 weeks. <laughs> I, had put, <laughs> I had put so many points in there. It was impossible for anybody to take home anything to carry it was what, just what a nice fun. way to say it was too long yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes and i'm i'm a sh short time preacher i my brothers both told me that when i went into the ministry they never heard a short sermon that wasn't good right right i yeah no one's ever told me you didn't talk long enough that's right that's exactly you, you should have gone on for another 10 minutes that's so right I, I yeah i think that's that's uh any public speaker, I yeah. think it's it's hard. Uh, you really have to work hard to make it short, and you do. and it, it it always pays off. It always pays off. It takes a lot more work to make it short, and especially to you know to have one thing you want to say. But I love for people to say, "You didn't talk very long this morning." Yeah, yeah. That that's the rarity. Right. Well, Susan, I'm I'm uh, looking at my um, uh, my 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 clock here, and and uh, I think our time is up. This has been well, this has been a wonderful. I really have enjoyed it. You and I need to go get grab a cup of coffee sometime. I'd love to to pick your brain a little bit more about about preaching and just uh, hear more about your 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 witness story because I can sure. tell that uh, you're you're filled with the Holy Spirit, and that's super. Thank you. I'd love to do that. Thank you, Alan. Thanks for having me today. Oh, my pleasure. And I, I want to thank everybody who 
uh, joined us. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please share it, email it to people. You never know uh, who needs to hear this message. And uh, uh, Dr. Sharp is going to go preach the word of the Lord. I'm going to go get some justice. Okay. Thank you all very much. <laughs>